Did you guys know that Stranger Things is based off of three dark CIA projects that happened in real life? And these all include Project Stargate, MK Ultra, and the Montauk Experiments. So as most of you guys know, Stranger Things is set in the 80s during the Cold War. The US wanted to be able to control Russian spies and get them to answer all of their questions. They were very offended that they were not the only ones who had access to an atomic bomb anymore. So as an answer to this, the CIA decided to start a project that would create superhumans. And the whole purpose of Project Stargate was to manipulate the human mind in order to create heightened psychic abilities so that they could be used in the military for spying purposes. And some of the biggest focuses for this project included telekinesis, remote viewing, and psychoenergetics. Psychoenergetics is a mental process that through heightened cognitive abilities, an individual is capable of changing the characteristics of an item and its position without even touching it. And you can see throughout the show of Stranger Things that Elle is able to pick up and move things with her mind. Psychoenergetics also just reminds me of the force. But Project Stargate was reported to have partial success with telekinesis and remote viewing. And just a weird interesting tidbit is that most of the people that possess these remote viewing skills were actually Scientologists. But we can see in the show that Elle has access to watching other people's conversations. So is it possible that someone has been able to master exactly what Elle can do within the show? The realities of some of these projects like MKUltra is even scarier in real life. Go to the next part. So many terrifying parts of Stranger Things happen in real life. And it genuinely makes me wonder if the CIA has admitted to this stuff, I wonder what they're not admitting to. For example, the Montauk experiments. The Montauk experiments are a conspiracy theory that alleges that there was a series of U.S. experiments done at Camp Hero. And the purpose was not only to develop things like psychological warfare, but also time travel. Stories about the Montauk experiments have been circulating since the 80s. UFO researcher Jacques Vallée and Preston Nichols ended up coming forward with repressed memories about the experience. And the topics included in this book talk about time travel, teleportation, mind control, contact with extraterrestrial life, and staging fake Apollo moon landings. So basically stating that the moon landings videos and photos were allegedly faked by them. And in the book, he talked about how there was a hole ripped in hyperspace, which was confined to Montauk, which allowed them to time travel between 1983 and 1943. And this is all included in Stranger Things. Because in Stranger Things, there's a hole torn in space that's threatening all of Hawkins. And in the first chapter of Preston's book, it states that whether you believe this is fiction or nonfiction, you're in for an amazing story. And if you want to know all about MK Ultra, which is what Elle's mom was a victim of in Stranger Things. So on my YouTube, I'm going to be going into depth on what what happened during those experiments and I'll also be going inside a sensory deprivation tank myself to see if I can access the upside down like Elle does. So The Wizard of Oz has some of the darkest secrets behind the making of the film that I have ever even heard of. So the guy that played the Tin Man, his name's Jack Haley, was not actually the original actor. The original actor was supposed to be a guy by the name of Buddy Ebsen. He had to actually leave shooting after two weeks because he was poisoned by his own costume. The aluminum powder that was used for the costume poisoned him. It was reported that he would wake up in the middle of the night screaming because of the pain in his hands and arms and legs. So Hollywood goes ahead and finds someone to replace him and instead of like actually creating something that's safe, they go ahead and continue using the aluminum powder on Haley, but just making the paste a little bit thicker so that it isn't as easy to digest. And for Epson, it leads to difficulty breathing in which he has to go to a hospital and stay in an oxygen tent. And again, they still did not like switch to a safer product. And this was not the only toxin that affected cast members on set. Do you guys know the scene where Dorothy is laying in the field of poppies and Glenda the Good Witch sends her a little flurry in order to wake her up? Prestatil asbestos, which is a known carcinogen, was actually used as the snow. And I don't know how else to stress like, how bad that is and you guys know that fuzzy costume that the cowardly lion wears um yeah that's actually like not really a costume like it's actual it, it's an actual skin of a lion and he would apparently sweat in it so badly that it would have to be aired out every single time he got off set his makeup was so complex that he couldn't even eat in between scenes in addition to this one of the cast members ended up getting severely injured after a stunt went totally wrong and the actors who played the munchkins would throw like these ragers every night. I'm going to get into that in the next part. So to go into some more disturbing secrets of The Wizard of Oz, the actress that played the Wicked Witch of the West, Margaret Hamilton, was completely left burnt by her famous scene where she's supposed to be leaving in red smoke. During the scene, she's supposed to be able to exit the stage as the smoke comes out, but for whatever reason during the scene, she wasn't able to exit the stage and got severely burnt. Both her broom and her hat caught on fire and that ended up burning her face. And instead of like, I don't know, getting a call to make sure she was okay, um, the executive producer called her the next day wondering when she was going to be back on set. She wasn't actually able to make it back for about six weeks and she strongly considered suing them but was afraid that she might not ever book a role again if she did. Her hands still remained burned after that and so she had to wear a green pair of gloves for the rest of filming. And they ended up putting all the actors who played the Munchkins into the Culver Hotel which was just a few blocks away from MGM Studios and they were said to throw wild ragers every single night. 
They would be erotic, swing from chandeliers, and show up to set the next day drunk. And in addition to the reputation of these wild parties, this hotel actually has a massive reputation for being horribly haunted. And a lot of the workers today will still report suspicious paranormal activity happening around the hotel. So I'm honestly kind of curious if we go there and see if any of the actors from The Wizard of Oz come through. So we're actually here at the Culver Hotel with this very creepy painting. And it's not just me here, I'm here with Nikki. Hey. And we're also here with Mackie and Amanda. <laughs> and it should be up on my YouTube by now. So go ahead, click on it and see what happened to us.